In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to interpret the nature of a moderated effect in multiple regression. And I'm going to do so with a basic spotlight analysis. Now in a previous video, I showed you that there was a statistically significant interaction between intelligence and academic motivation with respect to their association with academic achievement, or GPA. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to consider academic motivation the moderator in this context, but it's perfectly plausible to consider intelligence the moderator. You have to choose one side or the other. It's entirely up to you. So the first step in doing the spotlight analysis, which will ultimately involve creating a scatter plot with two regression lines, one for the low levels of academic motivation and another one for the high levels of academic motivation. So what I need to do is I need to recode my academic motivation variable in such a way that low values get a value of 1 and high values of academic motivation get a value of 2. Now I've already sorted these academic motivation scores from low to high just to show you that what the recoded variable is going to look like in a fairly easy way. So I just literally went into data, sort cases, and then I sorted the academic motivation variable ascending, OK. I've already done that. So there we go. We got from low all the way to high toward the end of the data file. And now I want to get a variable that will have ones over here for the low values and then twos for the high values. How can I do that efficiently? The first thing I need to do is estimate the median because that's going to be the demarcation criterion to distinguish a low and a high value. So go into Analyze, Descriptive Statistics Frequencies, Academic Motivation, Statistics, Median, click Continue, deselect the frequency table, and click OK. And here is the median, 3.8809. So any academic motivation score that is equal to this, I'm just going to take a snapshot of it because I might need to consult it in a minute. Any value that is lower or equal to 3.8809 is going to be identified as a low academic motivation level, and anything larger is going to be a high motivation level. So now that I've got the median, I go into transform and recode into different variables. This is going to create that dichotomous low high variable, and it's academic motivation that I want to recode, and I'm going to call it motivation low high change that, go into old and new values, and range lowest through to a particular value, and that's going to be the median that I estimated, 3.8809. So any value lower than 3.8809 and 3.8809 is going to be labeled 1. And any other value, as far as I'm concerned, is a high value, so that gets a 2. Then I click Continue, and I click OK. And SPSS has created a motivation low and high variable, entirely consistent with the values associated with the academic motivation variable, the continuous one. So here are all the ones, and then it flips to twos as soon as you get beyond the 3.88 demarcation criterion, which is the median. Now the next step is, well, one, I could actually estimate the correlations. You don't have to do this. But this does shed some light on the nature of the interaction. So I'm going to split the groups. Split file, compare groups. I'm going to compare low and high. Click OK. And now I'm going to analyze the correlation between intelligence and GPA for low and high academic motivation. And here are the correlations. So for low motivation, the association between intelligence and GPA was estimated at 0.384. By comparison, for high motivation, the correlation is equal to 0.455, so it's larger. So again, getting back to the nature of an interaction, the direction or magnitude of the association between one independent variable and the dependent variable depends on the values of another variable, which is the moderator, and in this study, it's motivation. So how well intelligence predicts GPA depends on the level of motivation of the participants. In this case, the correlation gets bigger. You might think of it theoretically that as people's motivation gets higher, their intelligence can express itself with respect to achievements. But if your motivation is really, really low, then it doesn't matter how much intelligence you have, you're not going to achieve very much. 
It's almost like motivation is the facilitator of intelligence being able to express itself. Again, you can flip the interpretation of this with respect to motivation and intelligence being the moderator. So motivation can't express itself with respect to achievement unless there's some intellectual capacity in the person that's trying to achieve something. So this is the interaction saying that these, basically these two correlations are significantly different from each other. Not really quite true, but it's saying that the nature of the association depends on the level of motivation. So next, I'm going to create a scatter plot to depict the line of best fit associated with the two groups, low motivation and high motivation. Before I do so, I got to unsplit my data file though, because I need all data points. Analyze all cases. Okay. Go into graphs, chart builder, and you want to select the group scatter plot. So make sure you got scatter and group scatter plot. Double click on that, and it goes in here. We want intelligence as the x axis variable, and we want GPA as the y axis variable, and we also want to split the scatter plot across the two groups motivation low and high. Put that in there. If you double click this, you get the option of having it separated across color or pattern. I'm going to choose pattern. Click OK. And here's the scatter plot that depicts the association between intelligence and GPA across low and high motivation. It doesn't look very good right now. One key thing is you need to add the fit line. So double click and then if you go over here, you'll see add fit line at subgroups. I want that. Click on it. And here we get the two different lines of best fit for low and high motivation. Click on this attach label to line. We don't want that. Deselect it. Click apply. And click close. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and make it look prettier. Get rid of the fill. Get rid of the border. I'm also going to change the color associated with one. I'm going to change the squares to green to contrast it more. There we go. I'm also going to change the weighting of these. Border width to 1.5. Apply. There we go. So here is the scatter plot depicting the association between intelligence and GPA for both low motivation and high motivation. And you can see that low motivation low motivation has the straight line. I'll probably even try to make that a bit better. Okay, lines. There we go. Change that to 1.5, maybe even 2. OK. All right, so here is the scatter plot depicting the association between intelligence and GPA split across low and high motivation. And high motivation is the broken line in terms of the line of best fit. And you can see that the slope is steeper. And that steeper slope suggests that the association is bigger, which I do know based on this 0.455 correlation. It is bigger. And this is it depicted in a scatter plot. By comparison, for the low motivation group, the standardized slope is only 0.384. It's still pretty big. And it's depicted with this solid line here. So this is one way to conduct a spotlight analysis that I think sheds light on the nature of a spotlight analysis. And it also sheds light on the nature of the interaction. So that statistically significant R-squared change that I observed in the previous video, which was amounting to only 1% increase in percentage of variance due to the product term, the interaction, is really basically this difference in the slopes. So by taking into consideration information relevant to the interaction between the two variables, you can predict GPA better. And in particular, it's because that with a high level of motivation, the association between intelligence and GPA is stronger than when it's lower. And you can make theories about why that's the case. But statistically, this is one of the better ways to present it. Now, I mentioned in a textbook later on that most people tend to split the data into more extreme groups. So they'll use one standard deviation above the mean 
and one standard deviation below the mean for the purposes of demarcating the sample from low to high, whereas I just split it right in the middle. And in my opinion, this is more accurate because it's using all the data and it's not exaggerating the magnitude of the interaction. This is what a 1% interaction looks like. It's pretty messy. There's not much difference. The interaction isn't strong. This is, in my opinion, a more accurate approach, but it's not the most common approach. So in a video later into the chapter, I show you how to apply those more commonly observed techniques, which in my opinion exaggerate things probably a little too much.